Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. What we are going to make today is an ulu, or a herb chopping knife. Now the steel that we're going to use is actually this old saw blade. Now this isn't a wood saw, it was actually a hydraulic hose cutting saw. A place that I used to work at, we used to use these things to cut our hydraulic hoses. And we would send them out to be sharpened, but they could only be sharpened so many times. And I think the diameter just got too small and they would stop sharpening them. So I'd asked my boss one day if, if I could have this thing, they're throwing it away. And he said, sure. And that was probably about eight years ago. Uh, now you can see from the chunk that's cut out of there, I have previously made an ulu with this steel. So I'm, well, I've used it once. I wouldn't say I'm familiar with it, but it's very unique. And I'll kind of talk to that in a little bit as we go through this video. Uh, but I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Princess Auto, for allowing me to create this and then also supplying some of the materials that we use for this blade. So I just kind of traced out a template there, something I think would work. Uh, the previous Ulu I made actually had a hole in the center and I want to try something a little bit different. So I got a rough template there and we'll take it outside, put some layout dye on it. And then this steel, uh, I've tried it before in my portable bandsaw and it really chewed up the teeth. So I am electing to use the angle grinder to cut this profile. It definitely has a nice ring to it. Now I had originally tried using my small wheel attachment and I wasn't able to get into these little radiuses here. So I took it outside and I've just got a little carbide burr. This is definitely not the way I prefer to do it, but it's kind of what I have to do. Uh, I used to use an oscillating spindle sander and while the, the variety and types of abrasives available weren't that amazing, it was actually really nice for applications like this because it allowed you to get right in there because that's actually a single cylinder, you know, spinning around rather than uh, I have the, the kind of arc that the belt runs at. And that's what was, it's too wide to get in here. I would have ended up taking the tip of the blade off and I really wanted to preserve the length of this blade. So that's why we did all this cleanup here using this little tool. It worked well. And after we're done with the die grinder, uh, I wanted to refine the shape a little bit more. And uh, I decided to use some hand files. You know, it's funny, these, these tools that we started with that we've always had in, in a lot of our cases, even after we get the big belt grinders and all the fancy stuff, you know, I'm surprised how many times I actually end up going to the good old fashioned hand file. And uh, you know, something satisfying about this work, it's almost meditative. Uh, but it does allow you to get exactly what you want and you don't really have to worry about making a big mistake quickly. <laughs> you know, it takes a while. Uh, I ended up cutting out a lot of the footage, but I probably spent about a half an hour, 20, ah, maybe 20 minutes cleaning it up. And then once I'd gotten it fairly even, and again, I can't really check symmetry from one side to the other. I'm kind of eyeballing, guesstimating, but I decided I'd throw a little uh, flap disc sanding wheel into the die grinder. And that does a nice job at getting the nice grain line and it also polishes uh, the, that part of the steel really nicely so uh, it's, it's funny uh, I didn't think I would use non-specific knife making tools in this build as much as I did I just kept coming up to roadblocks and I was like well I really have no choice I need to use that so always fun to get back to the good old days now to attach the scales to this knife I'm going to be using uh, screws and so we're going to put quarter inch holes in here and then we're going to be using aluminum standoffs. And uh, I'm going to use three fasteners. So it's going to be a total of six screws, three on each side. And then we'll have that piece of aluminum in the middle. And for that, I just need to drill out these holes, space them roughly even, and they're going to be quarter inch holes. Thank you. 
the the ring of this steel was fascinating me, obviously, uh, throughout this entire build. Now, with this being a mystery steel, I have no idea what it is, what series it is, uh, but I found it very interesting when I was grinding. Normally, when you grind a knife steel, you get that kind of creates like a steel wool kind of. You get kind of long, stringy fibers. Um, this almost was like a powder. You know, as I'd wet things and my hands were wet, uh, the steel would stick to my hands. It was almost like wet chalk or something. It's really interesting. It seemed as though whatever, the, this stuff ground finer somehow. And this here is a 60 grit ceramic belt. Uh, I don't know. I was very fascinated by the sound of this knife as I was working on it. And then also the, uh, the stuff that came off it was very, very different. I'd be curious if any of you guys might know what type of steel these blades were made of. Uh, they were very impressive. You know, when we'd cut hydraulic hose, it would cut through the rubber casing, uh, the stainless steel braided portion on the inside, or steel braided portion. Uh, very tough, very effective. And this particular blade, I actually cut like hundreds of hydraulic hoses myself with this very blade. So uh, really interesting. I did, again, I, I did anneal it before we did all this work to it. And what I'm doing is basically putting the profile like you would on an axe. I don't want a real long grind line. I don't want it to be very thin at the edge. I figured this is going to be subjected to a lot of rock chopping. And, you know, often when you're doing the rock chops, you're kind of rotating it a little bit. And I, my thinking was that if the blade was too fine, it might end up breaking. Uh, so I ended up grinding this to 20 thousandths of an inch before sharpening. And in just a minute, I'll kind of show you the profile we we're going for. Uh, the original... Uh, angle on here the original blade was very blunt and so I'm just kind of rounding that over and I really liked what I was getting with the rotary platen here I ended up switching to the closer wheel so it was a little less deflection in the middle uh, but something like this this is just a great application for this tool uh, I typically use my rotary platen for handle shaping and I do in this video later on as well but uh, for things like this just kind of getting a nice rounded uh, convexed grind oh, it works so good and there was the original bevel. And here's what we end up with. It was a little bit different grinding this. Um, I kind of had to grind half of the blade and then switch to the other half of the blade. It was difficult for me without scraping up my knuckles to get a full pass on it. But I just kind of took my time, went nice and easy, and uh, we made it work. You can see where I'm just hitting that high spot right now, the shiny portion. That's where I'm just starting to round over, and then I'm just continually working that in. So I just tried to line up both sides, looking down the profile of it, and get them so they're even, and we're going to call that good. Now this next part was really shocking to me. Um, I wanted to clean this steel up and I remembered this from the first time I used this steel. It is a very stain uh, conducive steel. Uh, trying to get these these dark marks off it uh, from annealing it. And it was also like a blackened type, it had a black something on it before. But it took a long time to get this to shiny steel. And even in working with it, when I was grinding one bevel, uh, I'd flip over to the other one and, you know, after just a few passes, I would have rust developing. So probably not the most ideal steel to use in a situation like kitchen use, but I might end up messing around with a vinegar patino later on. Uh, but I want to get all the black off. I didn't want to make sure I didn't have any residue like from rubber hydraulic hoses or anything like that. So we throw it in our kiln, heat treated at 1600 degrees for 20 minutes and <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky I had my super safety uh, shoes on there. And you know what? I was wondering, man, I wonder if I've lost too much heat. You can see it really cooled down quickly there. But I thought, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. We're going to see what ends up happening. And from the little time that I have used it, it is holding fairly well. So again, I got this micarta from Princess Auto. It's really exciting that they are starting to carry knife making specific stuff. Uh, forges, anvils, handle material. I'm really hoping soon they would end up carrying knife steel. <laughs> that would be like the dream come true. But 
Again, I want to say thank you to Princess Auto for sponsoring this video, providing me with uh, some of the tools that I'm using here and the handle material. It's just wonderful. Like I can just drive in there and go shopping for knife making stuff. That's pretty cool. With both slabs of my car to cut out, I'm going to use my cant twist clamps to lock them to the knife handle. And uh, that way I can just keep everything together. We can drill all the holes at one time. I have a lot of success doing this method. And what I'm doing right here is just marking a little tiny divot with a quarter inch bit. I don't want a quarter inch through hole. I want a much smaller diameter hole going through. And then on the inside of the handles, we are going to counter bore for the quarter inch standoff that's going to kind of recess into the handles. And then also for the screw heads that we're going to be using, we do a counter bore there as well, just so we can get those screws sitting nice and flush. And before I take the clamps off, I'm just going to trace out the profile here. That way I'll cut this one. And then after I've done my counter bore, I'll stick the aluminum pin inside there, put the two pieces together, and then I will just basically trim the uncut piece to the cut piece. So just using the depth stop on my drill press, I can control how deep these counter bores go. And these are going to be the little holes that the standoffs, the little aluminum barrels are going to sit into. So right here you can see why I needed to use the die grinder to do the profiling on the inside of these radiuses. Uh, the edge of the knife would hit if I go all the way in there so I'm just using this to do some initial cleanup and then again even to trim this micarta down I'll be doing a lot of that with my die grinder. And now that we've got the handle profiled to the tang of the knife, we'll start putting in some ergonomic grips, mostly just rounding things over. I like to start at 45-ing everything, getting the, the mass of the material gone, and then start blending it. Now this here is a scalloped belt. You can see those little ridges on the edge, and it uh, works great, and it really prevents the edge of the belt from biting in. So this is usually the final step before hand sanding. I can just blend in all this stuff. This is a 220 grit, so it's not taking a lot of material off, uh, but just really kind of smoothing everything out. And then we'll go over it by hand just to kind of get everything nice and brought up to about 800 grit. Now 
Now, one thing I like to use when I'm polishing up my synthetic handle materials is a product called Meguiar Scratch X 2.0. And it's just a real fine automotive paint finish uh, uh, polishing compound. I'm sure other ones would work great. And I find that does just a really nice job at bringing out a nice shine to the, in this case, the micarta. Works great on G10 as well. So that's usually what I do at the buffer. Once everything's done, go over it real lightly and just does a great job. And here's a really great tip that I got from a buddy of mine, Shady Grady. I'll put a link to his Instagram in the description below. Uh, but he had suggested using clear vinyl when I'm laying out my maker's mark. And that has been an absolute game changer. It's nice where you can see all the different edges that you're trying to line up to. And you can still see your maker's mark. And it just, it has made locating the maker's mark so much easier. Uh, having said that, <laughs> I'm not entirely happy where I put this one. It's a little close to the handle for my liking, but uh, not much you can do. Now, in the final assembly of this knife, even the oils from my hand were starting to create stains. <laughs> and so, you know, as far as uh, choice in, in steel for kitchen cutlery, this probably isn't it. Uh, mostly, I liked having such a large piece to work with. I liked the fact that the profile, the radius, was already there. And it's actually a really nice radius for, uh, for cutting herbs and stuff like that. So I'm interested to see the patina that's going to develop on this. Uh, but the frustrating thing was when I went to take the beauty shots, <laughs> uh, the, the blade was already looking like garbage. It was not as clean as when it came off the grinder. Uh, so I'm just going to have to live with that. Again, like I mentioned, maybe a vinegar patina in the future would be kind of cool. Um, but I'm really happy. This thing feels good. Uh, the, the handle material I used was three-eighths of an inch thick. Uh, so we've got over three-quarter inches, and it's kind of designed to be a larger kind of a palm swell. Not like that. Definitely not chopping like that, but I'm, I was worried what it would feel like with having a large portion come down the middle. Uh, but the idea isn't that your fingers go around that anyways. So I don't know that green onions are the best representation of, of how well this thing cuts, but it did fairly well. Um, ultimately, I think for finer herbs, parsley, oregano, uh, those fresh herbs, I think this thing's going to be really handy. Uh, looking forward to using this in the kitchen, and I thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and again, thank you to Princess Auto for sponsoring it. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Cheers.